I am uh, I just paused um, one of uh, Ray Higdon's uh, Ray Higdon's videos over at YouTube and it's about um, not doing the work but expecting something to change all right basically basically that that's the that's the premise if you don't put the work in then expect something to change nothing's going to change okay nothing is going to change here's the um, here's the skinny on uh, on what people normally would expect someone offers them a network marketing opportunity or a business opportunity and they would say sige pag nanalo ko sa loto bibiliin ko yan kapag uh, dumating na yung dumating na yung pera galing abroad sige I'll consider that you know if you're waiting for something uh, if you're waiting for something else so that you can initiate so that you can um, say that all is going to change nope guess what it's not you don't put the work in nothing's going to change okay this is what um, this is what the manana habit is all about okay we Filipinos have that bad habit called the manana habit if we think that um, we can put the work tomorrow okay we'll put the work tomorrow if we can put the work for another tomorrow all right let's do that there that's why a lot of Filipinos are reeling right now in this crisis in this um, in this pandemic of they are they put off all the um, the chances of uh, of making a change they got they, they, they got they passed off so many chances to um, to change then something like then something like this comes along they don't know what to do now they fucking don't know what to do now if you are ex if you're expecting something um, if you're expecting something else so that you can so that you can act upon something if you're expecting something to change before you change I'm sorry life doesn't work that way you initiate the change change will happen that's all there is to it that is all there fucking is to it don't expect something to change if you cannot initiate the change yourself if it doesn't come from if the change doesn't come from you nothing's going to change Remember that, YouTube. I just uh, uh, gone through uh, what uh, one of Nathan, Nathan Chan's videos on YouTube. He's the, um, he's the CEO of Founder Magazine. Uh, Founder Magazine is based in Australia. And he's got a very interesting story here. He tells the story of how how he got rejected by Shark Tank. Right. Shark Tank is a um, Shark Tank is a reality show. In, I think in the U.S., where um, budding entrepreneurs would present their uh, would present would pitch their business to the three sharks, namely uh, Damon John, the owner of Fubu. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, and uh, I forgot the third one. I forgot the third. Those two I remember, all right, because they're they're very visible these days. He saw uh, he saw that as a blessing in disguise because if it uh, weren't for him getting rejected on Shark Tank, founder wouldn't be what it wouldn't be where it is today. Okay, it's a sought after brand in Australia, and he might have gotten destroyed. If if he were chosen to to uh, to be on Shark Tank, 
we've uh, people have seen a lot of uh, budding entrepreneurs get destroyed on that on that show. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs> it's not. It's not a pretty sight. But what am I driving at here? You know, uh, Nathan Chan uh, took a chance. Uh, he gambled, and he got rejected. But that's okay but he didn't he didn't audition for for the money he auditioned because he was uh, that uh, concerned over his brand founder intention is good but he still gambled and he, uh, he got rejected proverbially all right <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> Proverbially rejected. It just goes to show you that um, if you always see the good in anything, you won't get attached to the loss. You won't get attached to the defeat. Okay, which makes which makes me go back to uh, to what my mentor said, my mentor and friend Pito Aguilar. All right always see the good in uh, in anything that's what he uh, that's what he always that's what he always tells me in both in person and in his books and in his in his book the gift of abundance yeah he's uh, spot on with that because Nathan Chan got rejected uh, for Shark Tank but he saw the good in that so he kept on going until founder is now one of the I think one of the most recognized one of the most recognizable brands in Australia. So we can say in Filipino that nagbunga rin ang kanyang uh, ang kanyang pagkatalo. Okay, nagbunga rin. So the next time you feel defeated, don't be. See the good in that. Okay? See the good in your defeat. Remember that, Twitter. Remember that. I just um, paused a video by Evan Carmichael. Uh, maybe the problem was I never believed enough that it could happen, and that's why it didn't happen. It says uh, there are ways to manifest what you really want, but the way I the way I see it. Knowing what you want is um, its just the tip of the iceberg. Right? It's all about what I call, uh, what I can call the billion dollar keyword. First up, why, why do I call it such? Because, well, this is the very same keyword that sparked the personal development industry. All right? And, well, we all know that the personal development industry is a multi-billion dollar industry right now. Especially in these, uh, especially during these times. What is that billion dollar keyword I'm talking about? Belief. It doesn't matter if you believe in someone or something. If you don't put that belief in yourself first, pfft. You can't expect success to fall on your lap. You can't expect uh, yourself to do great things. Catch my drift, LinkedIn. That's why belief is what I call the billion dollar keyword. Because that keyword, well, that is probably the first keyword that um, became the stepping stone for the personal development industry. Take a look at all the gurus that have uh, that have come and gone. Okay? They all say one thing: if you cannot believe in yourself first, success will never come to you. That is the gist of all their principles. All right, that is the gist of all their principles. If you <clears throat> keep on 
believing what other people say first, whether it be positive or negative, you're weak. You're pathetic. You don't like those two words? Well, turn off this, um, turn off your phone and start believing in yourself. For God's sakes. Okay? Believe in yourself first for once. Then, well, you've probably increased your chance of success, personal success, by probably, uh, you may be, you may have Increase it to around 60 to 70 percent at least. Belief is a billion dollar keyword. Put that keyword in your head now, LinkedIn. Put that keyword in your head now. I just stopped for a while from. Uh editing my episode reactions digest for uh, for this Saturday because um, right now I'm a one-man show okay and I suddenly got to thinking that all great entrepreneurs started as a one-man show because sometimes I would feel alone on all this on all this that I'm doing I am okay I do feel alone all the time because of uh, because of this uh, the solo grind that I'm doing I would sometimes feel isolated I would feel um, basically uh, basically I am all alone on this but when it comes to uh, well when it comes to um, Grasping, grasping success. I'm quite halfway there now. Because when I get when I um when I remember all those great entrepreneurs that started started solo, like um, Jeff Bezos, right? Amazon was just a one man show. It was just him. It was just him. Then Zig Ziglar, okay? the late great Zig Ziglar. He started his speaking career as a one-man show. Then probably, um, yeah, mm. Colonel Harlan Sanders, the founder of KFC. Okay. Probably um, the best one-man show success story of all time because well, he started KFC when he was already a senior citizen. At around 64, 65, he peddled his uh, his fried chicken recipe to restaurants in the Kentucky area. Even uh, he even went uh, he even went to the northern part of the United to the northern part of the U.S. to just to pitch it. It was all him. Then, well, slowly the restaurants uh, liked this recipe, and he. Then agreed to pay him a certain amount for usage, okay, as royalty. Then, well, that was probably where the concept of franchising started, with KFC. And to think, it started as a one-man show. It was just Colonel Sanders himself. So when I, so every time, I feel, um, uh. I feel like I'm uh, doing a lost cause. I feel like um, I am. I feel like uh, call this? Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. When I feel like um, just drop everything and stop doing this, I go back to those um, to those entrepreneur to those entrepreneurs that have started. Some of the biggest brands today as one man shows. Okay. And to see the fu- the what the future holds for me through them. All right. And I just I'll just say to myself again. All great businesses started as one man shows. 
power tip for you instagram power tip for you hey um head to head comparison has been bothering me uh, since this since this afternoon because i'm preparing right now actually for my for another 24 hour stream at twitch something i did not do for youtube right i don't know uh, there's there's some magic about twitch about streaming on twitch that uh that's more that's more exciting than youtube right let's make that head-to-head comparison shall we okay so what in terms of um in terms of well of what each platform offers okay when it comes to live streaming uh, i've i've live streamed before on youtube and now of course i'm more uh my live streaming is more active now on twitch i find twitch to have a better live streaming platform than youtube why because well <clears throat> you don't have to be you do not have to be technical about anything okay, when you want to um, when you want to stream on Twitch. Again, you don't have to be technical when it comes to um, streaming on Twitch. On YouTube, well, the audience is pickier. Okay, I have dealt with a pickier audience on YouTube, and well, unless you're uh, a big YouTuber. No one's, going to, no one's going to attend your live streams there. But on Twitch, as long as you can live stream, someone is going to watch your stream. All right? So, at saka yung, uh, yung, quality ng, yung quality ng stream. All right? It's way better on Twitch than on YouTube. Okay? You can actually tweak it a bit. Okay? You can make... Uh, you can make streaming into an art form. Now, community-wise, okay, people um, tend to be more authentic on Twitch than on YouTube. Okay, the uh, the community there, all the communities, okay, nabulol ako to, on Twitch are more authentic than on YouTube. If you want to, um, if you want to follow a streamer. If you want, if you want to participate in a streamer's chat, all you have to do is follow her. All you have to do is follow him or her. On YouTube, well, anybody actually can uh, can participate in a live chat. But it's prone to um, it's prone to haters. It's prone to bashers. Okay. Uh, YouTube live streaming is more prone to bashers than on Twitch. Okay. If you basically if you don't follow that streamer, you won't be able to chat. Okay. You cannot um, send messages on his or her chat. Okay, so that's a security feature in itself. Okay, that's how um, how decent the every community is there. All right, and when it comes to um, Creator welfare. Twitch is much better than hand, in handling it than YouTube. Okay, on YouTube, um, creator welfare. Your well, creator welfare is almost non-existent. You are on your own on YouTube. Whereas on Twitch, okay, customer service is all out for you. Okay, creator. Um, they prioritize creators there. Okay? Creator welfare is at is number one on their list okay? because you got there are so many tutorials there that are um, specific to um, streaming streaming ethics. All right, they strictly enforce that there. And in terms of finally, in terms of good old backing, Twitch has. Um, more uh, liberal backing than YouTube. We all know YouTube is owned by Google. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Okay. <clears throat> but as you can see, um, 
it has uh, both have both have corporate backing actually but um, the corporate backing of twitch isn't going to interfere when it comes to uh, when it comes to content um, YouTube well YouTube uh, what you call this has no choice but to follow its corporate backing okay if Google says um, your content can't be here YouTube will take you out as well YouTube will take you out right so it's more liberal on Twitch than on YouTube but you can't erase the fact that um, YouTube is the primary video search engine right now so yeah, they have to go hand in hand if your priority is streaming go on Twitch if your priority is um, pre-recorded video focus on YouTube all right but when it comes to live streaming my personal preference is Twitch that's why I, I'm more active on Twitch now than on YouTube because well, I, I, I love streaming right I found its beauty I found its science okay I found its um, the freedom it gives to me as a creator okay I can do 24 hour streams without um, without anyone from Twitch saying oh that's that's it for now you've had you you've had enough streaming for the day nope I've seen streamers go go live for 48 hours straight all right and no one is stopping them all right no one's stopping them not even twitch management so that's my well that's my head-to-head -head comparison between twitch and YouTube it's up to you to judge but depending on um, what you want to focus go for either one but um, use the one you did not choose as a as a springboard for promoting the one you're focusing on so TikTok that's my head-to-head -head comparison between Twitch and YouTube